everybody, Venice001 here with my first commentary for Pixel Envy Revive. I think I should uh, introduce myself to you all first. I'm an Australian gamer. I've been playing the Battlefield series since 1942. Played a little bit of Battlefield 2 on PC, but didn't really get too much into it. And I moved on to console. Started my YouTube channel up about three years ago, posting gameplay footage of Battlefield Bad Company. Pretty much just montages set to music sort of thing, just a, a thing for my mates and I to have a bit of a laugh at once in a while. When uh, Bad Company 2 came out I decided to start doing commentary so I upgraded my capture equipment to an intensity shuttle for HD capture. With some encouragement from my mates I put out my first commentary about 7 months ago and since then I've been doing them pretty much non-stop. Before I get started I just want to take the opportunity to thank the guys that don't revive me bro. Don't blink and the guys at Pixel Enemy for giving me this opportunity to do commentaries for Pixel Enemy Revive, which I think is the best idea that's happened to YouTube in a long time, especially for the Battlefield community. Some games that will go nameless in this commentary do get a lot more notice than Bad Company or Battlefield in general does, so I'm glad it's found a home here now at Pixel Enemy Revive. As some of you might have noticed too, I do play the game on Hardcore. I've heard a lot of people say that's easy mode, but I've never quite understood that because you don't have spotting, you don't have your minimap, you don't have your ammo counter, and you really do have to rely on your map knowledge and your eyes and your ears to know exactly where the enemy's coming from. So I don't really see it as easy mode. It can be quite difficult sometimes, it's a very tough players on hardcore, very unforgiving game mode, you will drop very quickly. It's uh, not the same as normal. You can't really take a few rounds and then expect to get away. And also your health will not regenerate, so you do have to rely on your medics quite a bit. Team killing is possible on hardcore, so you do have to be mindful of what you're shooting at and when you're shooting at it. If an enemy's running in front of you and then also a friendly pops up in front of you and you shoot, you're going to take both of them out, so you kind of have to be selective of you know, who you're shooting at and when you're shooting at them. There are a couple of drawbacks to playing on Hardcore. The number one drawback would be the amount of snipers that are in Hardcore. It is quite epidemic. People do play the game mainly because they know they're not going to be spotted on the kill cam or by spotting with the back button. So they'll go and find a nice little spot to sit, usually in a tree or a bush and then pretty much camped there the entire game racking up kills. Now, a lot of commentators have talked about people not playing the objective and Hardcore is very notorious for that. It's probably the second drawback I would say. A lot of people don't play the objective and that can be quite frustrating for those that do. My playstyle would be very much like a tank. I don't mean that like the vehicle, I mean that like the character you would use in a role playing game or so, the player that takes the damage, runs in for the objective, takes pressure off the other, you know, squad mates or whatever. I'm a very objective orientated player, I'll run in for the objective numerous times, dying. As long as I get the thing armed, I'm not really too concerned about how many deaths I take. I very much go for the win when I play. I say I'm a bit too obsessed with the winning of, you know, each match, but I don't see a point in playing the objective if you're not there to win. I mean, are you there for kills? Then there's squad deathmatch for you to go play, but if you're on rush and you you know you're not going for the objective, you're in the wrong game mode. If you're not going for the flags on conquest, you're in the wrong game mode. If you're sitting in a bush trying to get your kills, go play squad deathmatch. Perfect for you mate. It's all it's about, it's kills. This particular game here just come off a pretty marathon session where I was lighting most of the crates all the time. So I decided to play the supporting role this time around and help those that were lighting the crates defend them, help them move in on the crates. You saw at the A crate before how I was hanging around and making sure those guys didn't come in from behind and take out the people that were lighting the crates. Right now I'm having a bit of sweep around, make sure you don't have any enemies. With Hardcore you will have enemies that hang around inside your base because they know they can't be found on a kill cam or by spotting. 
Take out a bit of a sweep around once in a while. The most important aspect of Battlefield Bad Company 2 is the squad spawn system. If you have four members in a squad, which I do suggest you try and have four members that you are communicating with, it will make it ten times easier to play the game. Always try to keep one member of that squad alive at all times. That person acts as a spawn point for the rest of the squad and they can stay inside enemy lines continuously and always have the pressure on the enemy. If you're always spawning back at your original spawn point, you lose the momentum and the enemy can set up a proper defensive perimeter and you'll find it very hard to get inside their base from then on. When it comes down to what weapons should I use and how should I use them and what situations, I find it's best to use what you feel comfortable with. Okay, go through each weapon, make a decision which one you like the best and stick with it. I mean, I've platinumed a lot of weapons since I've reached level 50. And some people say, oh, he's already platinum, but why is he still using that weapon? Well, I feel very comfortable with certain weapons, so I continuously keep using them. So I'll go for a platinum on the weapon if I'm close to it, but I don't, you know, typically go for it. It's kind of a challenge now that I've reached level 50 to platinum most of them if I can. But that's just a personal little challenge I have for myself. Because there's not much to do once you reach level 50. For those of you who have just recently brought the game and are ranking up slower than you expected to be ranking up, go for your Platinums on your support weapons, mainly like your RPGs, your mines, your knife, the ones that only take about 500 to get. You'll get the Platinums on those a lot quicker. Also go for your patches and that. You get 10,000 points for some of those, makes it very quick to rank up that way. I do have my favourite weapons, at the moment I'm using the 40mm shotgun attachment on the AUG here. I do like that attachment very much, the 40mm shotgun. It's very handy in close quarter situations. It can be quite a beast too, you can get quite a lot of double kills with it. Also depending on the map, I am a big fan of mines. I think they should be more utilised on certain maps, especially Arika Harbour, Atacama Desert. They're great maps for mines. The silent death mode, they just hang around until they're detonated or until you start throwing more down and they will start disappearing in the order that you laid them down. Since the patch on the M13 6AT4, I've been using that pretty much non-stop. I find that probably the best rocket launcher to use when you're taking out choppers. It's a very useful, very versatile weapon. It's not very good if you have guys inside a building and you see them behind a wall. It's pretty much not going to take them out there in that situation but it's a great weapon since the patch I'm really glad they did patch that one so just to wrap up here anybody who's on the fence about buying this game I strongly suggest you go and buy it it's a good training ground for Battlefield 3 when it comes out for those of you in your first week or month of playing the game stick with it you will enjoy it very much after a while it's better and better mate so thanks for watching and I'll catch us again next time